Hi guys, this is Mama Sue and I have another video for you today. Today we are going to be making these cute little origami elephants. Now I changed some things on the way it's folded to make it easier for, you know how I am about making things easier for people to understand. So this way you're going to be able to make it this time. If you haven't been able to make it from other videos, this time we're going to show you how to do it. I've made it with regular paper as well. There's a little difference in that when you're making it with regular paper because unless you cut it out the size of a dollar, because I do it with the dollar bills most of the time. Um, these are not regular dollar bills here. These are actually Christian flyers. Um, uh, let me show you what I got. See, I got these flyers you know, uh, these salvation flyers. And they're just almost the exact size of regular dollar bills. So that's what I like to use when I'm making these. And I don't have to let it go to waste. I can witness with them as well. And then these, I, I cut, uh, these I made out of, um, I use these, uh, I get these pads of paper for $3 down at, uh, Walmart. You can use Christmas paper, you can use wrapping paper, or any other kind of paper that you can think of. I've even used music book paper, which really looks cute. Now, what uh, I normally do is if, if I am using the squared paper from Walmart, it has a line down it so that I can make the square straight off. And so you just follow that line, you cut that that off so that you have a square. Now I'm to a square. Now if you're going to make these, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to cut this in half. Because you only need half, like a, like a bill. Cut this in half. Then I'm going to show you the difference in size with a dollar. Just so you know before we get started. Okay. Now there's my half. And here's my actual bill. Well, let me turn that over. It'll be easier for you to see this way. If I put that right there. Look at the difference in the size. That's why you have to, you end up cutting that much off the bottom when you're done. But I like to wait until I'm done making it to cut that extra off. You don't have to. You can always fold it under. That That's the fun thing about origami is using the whole paper. Now we're going to start out with the dollar bill or, or my flyer. What you're going to do is you're going to fold this thing right in half. You're taking this side and you're going to fold it down to this side. Just like this. Now in most cases I like to put a little line right in that crease. But I'm just going to put it on the edges. I don't think I need it on this side, but I'm going to put it there just so you, you can see. I put just a little line right here so that I can see where my fold line is. Now I'm going to fold, whoop, hang on a second, I dropped my pen. Now if you notice, Um, I have, well, there's my, my mark right there. There's my mark. I'm going to fold this, this side right here. I'm going to fold right down that center line, but I don't want it right on the line. I want it just above it because when you do your last fold, um, it can rip your paper if, if you have too much gathered there in the middle and you're going to have a lot there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold that. Um, let me show you. 
and then I'll bring it up and show you. I am going to leave it. Oh, about there is pretty good. Let me show you where I put it. See, I put it, see how far I went from the above the line? I want you to do it like that also. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. And the other side I can just kind of match up with the one that I already folded. Like this. See how we've got that big gap there? Now that's a nice one. That, that'll work up really good. Next we're going to take and we're going to fold this side down down this this line um, we're gonna fold it right down to right here this side right here let me show you and then I'll bring it up and, sh and show you up close that fold that you you're just gonna be laying it right on the fold that we just made Just like that. Now all I did was I folded this side, I've got glue on my hands, down to this side. And I just folded it over just like that. Do the same thing with this side. This is going to be the trunk of your elephant. That's why when we fold this thing in half, that's when it's going to be your trunk. And we don't want it ripping right in the middle of your trunk right right when we fold it. See, like when we fold it, we don't want that to rip. And if you've got too much right there in the middle, you will rip. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tip right here, and I'm going to fold it all the way back to where I made that second line. Put it right against the back of the dollar. Let me show you what I have here. See how I've got it folded right up to that? All I did, and this is an important thing right here. Always make sure that this folded part right here is the side that you're folding down. Because that's going to make all the difference in the end and that's where a lot of people get confused some people turn their dollar over and and try to do it from the other side like like going this way no don't do that always fold your folds in see how I folded it in when I'm folding it in I'm hiding all this just just for memory's sake <laughs> then I'm gonna open it, and then I'm, oh no I'm not, then I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to fold this side down here down to this bottom side right here. Just fold it straight down. Just this part. Don't touch the trunk. Just like that. Now what I did, I'm going to show you again, I folded this part down to this part, which gave me that crease, just like that. Now we're going to open it up a little bit. Let's just sit it down, oh wait, the right, the folded inside, just like this, we're going to turn it over to this, and um, we're going to touch, well, let me see if I can show you that better. Here's where we just folded. We just folded it down like this. Now if I turn that over and just open this up a little bit, you're going to see that we have like an accordion. That accordion fold is going to be the part that we fold again. But what we're going to do is we're going to fold this line right here down to that fold that we just made right here. 
right here. And the way we're going to do that, this is the easiest way I know to do it, is make sure that you're, you're at your accordion area. I'm trying to give you some visuals so that you know how to fold that because it won't do it from this side. It only does it from the side you fold it down on. I want to put my finger right here and I want it because it's going to bend my paper and then I can come right down to that line I made. Where's my line? <laughs> right down to the line I made. The fold. And then I'm going to press it down so I get another fold in there. See what I did? I folded this down on that crease that we just folded in. Folded it right down on that. You should be looking like this. And it should be on the side that has no folds. Now what you're going to do is you're going to flip that over. Or oh, wait. No, you're not. I'm, I'm messing you up. You're going to leave it on this side. And you're going to take this fold that you just made, I mean this, this back fold right here, and you're going to fold it all the way up to this fold, this fold right here. You see that behind there? You're going to just fold it up to that. You can see it sticking out from the sides on both sides. You're going to fold this up on top of that. It's kind of hard for me doing it in the air, but this is still the easiest way to do this. See see how I'm folding it right to that? Now I'm going to get it all the way across. Doesn't have to be perfect, but these are your your front legs, by the way. That's the way it'll come out. We folded this piece here down to that edge. See? Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the trunk. we got to make this trunk a little bit smaller because if we don't make this trunk smaller, it's going to be head heavy, top heavy, and it's going to fall forward on the trunk. We don't want it to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this part right here. I'm just going to fold, fold the whole trunk down on that fold we just made, just like that. Now let me show you what I did from this side. Here's the fold we just folded up. Remember when we folded that one up? Then we're folding this just straight back like that. Now we're going to fold it back up again, back where it was, but we're going to leave just a little bit be uh, edge before the fold. What I mean by that is when I'm folding it back, I'm going to just have a little bit of edge of the dollar showing still. See how a little bit of the edge of the dollar is showing? Well, if you're at that point, you're doing good. Now what you're going to do is you're going to open up that fold we made and just put that, that put this piece down in and fold it back up. Let me show that show you that again. Here's the here's the fold that we just made with the trunk just like this. Now we made a, a the leg. We don't want the trunk going over the leg. So what we're going to do is we're going to bend this open right here, lay the trunk down in it, and then fold it back up. Now you've got your front leg completed. And your trunk's ready to make. But we're going to do the back legs and the tail first. We're, almost, we're about halfway there. 
or a little over halfway. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this part of the dollar right here and we're going to fold it up to this line up here. Just like this. Just like that. See, I folded this. Wait, let me get a hold of it. See, I took it and I folded it up to this line right here. Just like that. Now, if you'll notice, when you look at the side, it looks like a half of a picnic ba uh, picnic bench. What I'm gonna do. Is I am see that see that line that center line in there from from our very from one of our earlier folds. I am going to bend this back at that line, making this into a picnic bench. See, I'm all I'm doing is that line that's already present in there from when we folded it in half. Now we're using that line right there. See how I'm going to fold that? I am just going to fold uh, it back on that line. Just like this. Oop. See how it looks like a picnic bench? Oop. <laughs> Goodness, it's hard to say. My light's weird today. I hope that's better. I'm trying to get that light. How's that? Oh, yeah, that's better. Should have done that in the first place. Well, anyway, that's where you are. What you did is it was out like this. And that fold that you made in the beginning, all we did is we folded this up like this. Now what I want you to do with that last little tail there, which is going to be your tail, so I want you to fold it back and then open it back up. Fold it back right over the fold. And then open it back up. See, I folded it right over that fold like, like when I was making the... Um, trunk. See that little thing there? I folded it right over the top of that. And then I opened it back up. Now we're going to make the, the legs. So at this point we're going to have to turn it over to this side. And you're going to notice the picnic -y bench part. Well the top of that picnic bench. I just want you to fold it up. Just like that. Just fold those corners up. I want you to go around the whole dollar. And it doesn't matter uh, if you're even or anything like that. Just put a bend in those. Just put a bend in them. This is going to help you with the next fold. Just like that. Then you're going to bend them all back out. You know, so, so there's where you are right now. Now what I want to do is, is see how you've got an opening in there in the bench. Well, that fold that you just made, I want you to op pull that fold open. See how I'm pulling it open? Now I'm going to take my finger right here and I'm going to squash it right there. All I did was I pulled this open like this and I squashed the tip down. Now I'm going to squash the tip down on this side. Those, those reverse fold type things are kind of complicated for some people. 
So just bear with me here. I'm going to show you slowly on the next one. Now we're going to turn it around the other side. And we're going to pull this up. See, when you pull it up, it almost makes the triangle for you. See? It's hard doing it in the air. Here, I'm going to bring this down so I can do it on the ground with you. Okay, here it is laying, here it is laying down here. What I'm doing is you had those, remember how you made those bins? You made the bins just like this? Well, those bins put creases so that I could, so that when I pull this up, those creases are still there. And, and they want to open on their own. They want to open on their own. You can tell I craft. I've got glue all over me. And then you just press them down. You see how that went? It was like this. There's your, there's your picnic table. And then when you pulled that picnic table back, you made legs. Those, that's, uh, that's an opening for the legs right in there right in this little place that formed your opening between your legs now what you're going to want to do is take this side and fold it right on the crease to the other side and make sure that it's that it's straight with the other side there's your trunk there's your body. Let me show you again. It was like this. And all you did was fold the, fold the whole thing down the middle. Now that you got the legs made. When we stand him up, you can see where the legs are. You can see where the trunk is. So you know we're getting close. Now with this, we already put a fold here, so what I would like to do, this is the easiest way for me to show you how to do this. A lot of people have a hard time with this tail, but it's easy. It's very easy. All you got to do is, I'm going to show you as close as I can. You're pushing in one leg, one of those folds, then you're pushing in the other one like this, and, and see, you're not letting that other piece go in. You're not in the, now you're coming up the leg as you're as you're folding in. You're coming up the leg, and you're gonna say, "Uh, -uh I'm not gonna let that come out. I'm gonna leave that there." And then you fold it, and you got a little tail there. Let me show you again. You start folding in the leg like this. If you, if you want to, you can just put your fingernail there to make sure it doesn't close all the way. And just fold it part of the way. And then fold it part of the way over here. And then when you go to close it, make sure that that's coming out instead of in. A lot of people even go without a tail because they don't like this part. But I can't do that. <laughs> I gotta have a tail. There's your little tail. Now, a lot of people are content with the elephant having a tail just like this and the, the behind quarters and everything. But me, I like to take my fingernail right here. Let's see if I can get close. I like to take my fingernail right here and just kind of push down on it. Kind of squash it in a little bit. See how that I squash that in? And then I squish it shut. And then it's kind of rounded. Well, there's a little piece coming out, but I can just push that in. But see how it made it kind of rounded? I like that look much better on my elephants. But you can leave it the other way if you like. You're the artist. Now on the trunk, this is the last thing we have to do is the trunk. 
on the trunk, what we do is we we op we put our fingers on the inside. Let's see this inside, and we're just pulling it up. We're pulling the trunk up, and then we're going to squash the ears back onto the body. Now let me show you a side view. Here it was. It was out like this. All I did was push down and then I squashed this against the body. Now this is where you get all your tears when, like I was telling you in the beginning, all that would have torn if you had that all the way up against the, the center fold when you were folding for that trunk. And you don't want that to rip because that just, after all your work, you don't want to go there. Now, if you let go of it, let those ears pop up, all I'm doing is I'm folding up the nose like this. Just folding it up to the top. I'll give it just a little bit of a press right here. I just pushed it up like that. See there? Now I'm going to grab his ears like this and fold them back. See, I, all I did is I grabbed his ears and folded them back. And look what happened to the nose. Now I'm going to pull that nose down some, like that. And I'm going to squash it right where, if I, when I get it in the place I want it, then I'm going to squash it down just like that. Now the last thing you have to do is bend that nose a little bit. Just bend it over. Fold it, bend it, whatever you want to do there. I like to fold it. I think it looks cute if you just put a little pressure right there and fold it over. I'm out of your view. Sorry about that. See how I just folded it over? Just a little fold. Now, check it out. You have just completed an elephant. Now, some people even like to, you know, flare the ears a little bit more. If you want to flare them a little bit more, flare them a little bit more. You know? It's up to you. I like them just folded back. And if I want to use them for witnessing, I like to um, iron them. Iron them flat. Like, like this. See how this is ironed flat? This one I ironed flat because I can just put one in my purse or I can give them to the kids. <laughs> Fun job for the kids, taking them to the mall and letting them hide these things. They love watching pick them, people pick them up. You know, but then people like them. People like them because they're origami. You know, I, I don't think they're going to mind the, that they're on um, a witnessing dollar. And, and it's a good thing to do. Now, if you want to also, I mean, I don't do this particularly. A lot of people will squash down here. Like I did the back of the tail with your fingernail to make the head a little more round. I don't even worry about that. I just like that tail uh, to be bent a little bit. Now, I'm going to show you with the other kind because I wanted you to know I wanted you to see how um, you have to change things. Well, I got a striped piece of paper, but what I did is I I took a square, like I told you, I took a square, cut off the edge, folded it in half, and this is what we've got after I cut it apart. Now we're gonna fold this in half. We're just making the elephant again. But I'm going to show you things you have to cut off or fold at the end. Now, I can put a big line on this because this is not a witnessing, uh, it's not a, a flyer. So, you can really see where I'm putting that line. I'm going to do this kind of fast because you've got the slow one that you can go with when you're learning. And then this one, we're just going to kind of go fast because I want you to see, 
um, where you have to cut off so you don't get confused when you use regular paper. There's my fold down forward, always on the lines. Then I'm going to turn it over, flip this up. Like that. Now I'm going to pick it up. Remember the accordion? Which way do we go? Can't do it that way because it doesn't work that way. So we're going to have to do it this way for, for this fold. I want that fold to go right down there on that line. And I am going to mark the line. No, I'm not because you'll see it later. Now, on regular paper, if you want to leave a message for someone, you write on the paper before. You can leave a Bible verse, or you can tell them what chores they have to do, or whatever. Um, or honey-do list. <laughs> but you just uh, write it on the back before you get started folding. Now, after you've got to that point, you're going to fold this up. Remember how we folded this up? Now, do you remember how to shorten the trunk? Shortening the trunk is the next. Fold it over and fold it back. There's your trunk folded down to keep your animal from being top heavy. Then you fold it in the crease. There's your front leg. Now, for the back leg, we just fold this up to that line. We look at the picnic bench. <laughs> see, see that, see that fold we have from before. We're going to make sure that we fold this down to that line. Put a fold right on top of it to that line. There's your other leg. Now let's uh, squash back the tail area. Now. See how much leftover I have for that tail area? You can either cut that off, you know, if you have scissors handy. I would just cut that, cut part of that off. You know, but you can still use it without cutting it off if you want to. I'm going to leave it on for now, just so that, that you know that you can do that. Now I'm going to fold the whole thing in half. There's our elephant cut folded in half. Now, on these longer papers, see that extra you have right here? I'm going to cut that off right away. Or, hmm, I'm not sure if I want to cut that off. I'm trying to, my mind always thinks of other things I can do, too. But I'd really like to cut that off. I'm going to go ahead and cut it off. That's the only thing difference between the dollar. You don't have to cut anything. Now, I'm, this, with this being regular paper, I'm going to show you the easy way. Just cut it off. Then you're going to open it up, and you're going to do those corner folds. Remember how we folded these corners up on all sides just to make that crease? The top of the picnic table. There it is. Now I'm going to open those up and fold them upwards. Now I've gotten to where I've done this so much that I don't even have to put that corner fold in there because I'm so used to folding them. I've done a lot of origami papers. Grandkids love it and people love it when you do these out of the same color paper um, on their gifts. That's what I like about doing it on regular paper is I can put it on gifts and I can put a sweet little note to them. Now I'm going to fold that in half and just you know I'm going to cut some of this off because this is a little bit long. On these papers that's the only thing you're going to have to do if you're not using a dollar bill. Dollar bills come out perfect every time. Fold that in half. And then start folding your leg in. Remember how we folded that leg in? 
There's one. Then I'm going to fold in the edge of the other one. And I'm just going to hold it. And I'm just going to hold it there. If I hold it there, then I can kind of play with the tail and get it right where I want it. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm folding the tail in a little at a time so that I don't so that I always have something left out. There's the last piece right there. And there's a little tail. Now I you know like I said before, I like a rounded bottom. So I'm squashing in right there on the top of above my tail. See there? That's where I squashed in. And then I squish it. There you go. You got your little tail. And it's very cute. Here's the front. Don't have to do any. There's you've already done the big changes. So there's everything is just the same as the other one now. Now I'm folding the ears back now. I folded this down. Now I'm folding the ears. I folded this down. Now I'm folding the ears back. I get busy looking at the the piece I'm working on. I don't look at the film to see what you're seeing. So sometimes I have to go back and remake these things. If it's if it's real bad, I'll remake it for you. And then now you're going to open it back up. And you're just going to fold this up to the top. Just fold it up to his head. Just like that. And just squish it. Okay. Now, I'm going to fold this back again. Fold the ears back again. See how, if you hold on to this, and you start folding those ears back, you're going to start getting a trunk being made. Ooh, look at that. Now, if you don't want it there, you can move it there, or, yeah, I mean, you can move it anywhere you want it to be. I like it to be up a little bit. So I'm going to push mine up a little bit. Then you squash it. When you get to that place you like it, squash it. And twist your... Then all you got to do is twist your trunk. If you want to twist your trunk, some people like an untwisted trunk. I like a twisted trunk. See? And there you go. You got another one. Another Masta piece. A little elephant. Now if you want to also on these little guys, I put an eye right here. I tried those little bubble eyes, but I really didn't like that. It looks better if you just take an ink pen and put a little dot there for your eyes. But the thing is, is you can make these big and put them on with a bow, or you can use them as a bow. Uh, like some of the other stuff I, I do. Now, you know, here's different kinds of paper you can use. You can use any kind of wallpaper. You can use, wallpaper works pretty good. Um, except you've got to really watch it when you use the wallpaper because of that. you got to leave a bigger gap for the trunk because it will rip. Unless you're using the vinyl kind. But then that's hard to fold. You know, you just got to play with it and see what works best for you. And here's this one. And here's this one. Boy, we've been busy today. Now, on my next video, I haven't, I don't know when I'm going to get it. Probably next week. We're going to be doing, uh, let me get this up here. We're going to be making this butterfly. Now, what's cool about this butterfly is it actually flies. Let me curl down the wings. Curl the wings down a little bit. Uh, I'm still working on a way to make it easier to show you how to make it. That's why I haven't put it on. 
I like to make them as easy as possible before I put them on. I might do this one, uh, this, uh, the elephant again, if you didn't get it, please let me know if I'm making them easy enough for you. Now, see, this is what I like about the butterflies. You know, you can fly them. Um, the kids love this stuff. See? Whee! That's what we're going to make as soon as I get that. Now, that, that's with one of those dollar kinds, so you can make it with an actual dollar bill. They make great gifts if you make them in any any number bill. Um, they make great gifts. Um, and they look really good. Like, uh, I went to a Topps meeting, uh, and they had these baskets made up for drawings. And they had uh, things like this sitting on the top with real dollars. And had them sticking on a, a skewer, sticking in the baskets. Um, as like little gifts that were in the basket you know I mean that's a cheap way to go with a with a gift is putting an origami uh, dollar or something in there so um, just keep in mind this is what I'm going to be doing next um, uh, um, you need to uh, subscribe if you want to have to be notified when I put my next one on. Um, the subscription costs nothing. So if you subscribe, you can find all my other origami um, uh, things that I've made and, you, uh, and the things that I'm going to make in the future, you will be notified when, it's, when I get another video out. I'm going to try to get them out at least every week or two. Um, uh, with school starting, it's been kind of hard to get things on, but that's where I am. That's what's going to be happening probably next week on the other butterfly or, or, or sooner. It could be this week. Uh, but even me, I'm, I'm, uh, 59 years old and, and I'm going back to school. I, I never finished high school and I got two more credits to do and I'm going back into school. So I'm going to be more busy too. So, um, give me a thumbs up if, if this was easy for you, I, because I need to know if I'm making them easy enough. If I'm not making them easy enough, I'll do it again. Okay. Well, you guys have a good day and remember Jesus loves you.